Now I'm even thinking that it's not about structure, perhaps uh, it's about information flowing out. Yeah, possibly. People don't get the information that uh, if, I'm, if I'm a journalist and yeah. I'm with the people, and almost on a daily basis we go on our Twitter uh, tread, you get to see that a lot of people are asking, do we have an economic team? Yeah, Who we, are the members? We have an economic team. You know, you know governance and management are very, they're, 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 there's a balance, okay, between talking and doing. And if you spend too much time talking, you won't do. If you spend too much time actually with your sleeves rolled up doing the work, you don't talk enough. And that, that's something we're trying to correct. But really, we've been in the trenches in the last few months trying to sort things out. Mm. Okay. Could you tell us then about this Nigeria-China agreement? What kind okay. of policies do, are we going to put in place to ensure that we get the maximum benefits from that agreement? Uh, to be honest with you, the central bank, that, that's an agreement, I believe, between the central bank and the Chinese central bank. I think that's what you're referring to. Um, there, was, there isn't one in, at the moment between the, the Federal Ministry of Finance and the Chinese government. What we have done is approach their Exim Bank to support us with rail and with some of the power projects. And what we expect from that is very cheap money over a long period of time that will allow us to invest in certain key projects. So. At the moment, you've talked about uh, the importance of us getting funds to finance infrastructure yeah. to develop that. That's on a long-term basis. Do yes. we have anything in the medium and short term? Absolutely. Um, but the thing is, <clears throat> the interesting thing is that when you try and stimulate an economy, you just spend. That's what governments do, okay? We are fortunate in our misfortune, and I know that this will sound very perverse, but just allow me to flow. So governments are trying to spend to stimulate their economy. In some economies, because they're so developed, even though they spend, it has no effect. So for example, the Australian government gave people money. They actually gave everybody some cash, trying to get people to spend. We are fortunate that actually what we're going to spend money on needs to be done and is actually going to grow the economy. So that, that's one of our, our, our key priorities, that this spending stimulus will actually create jobs. It's not money, spending money for the sake of spending money, which some of the advanced economies have been trying to do to try and get their own growth going. Yeah. We are fortunate that because we have this, well, I don't know if it's fortunate, maybe we're unfortunate because we shouldn't have such a huge deficit in infrastructure. We shouldn't have a situation where we don't have power, we don't have housing. Um, but it's an opportunity that we should, we should embrace. I'm just wondering though, you know, some of the uh, things, I mean, people have criticized this administration for uh, in its economic policies, yeah. for instance. Some even say they don't even know that it has an economic policy. They, do, mm. they don't even know that it has an economic blueprint. Mm. How do you respond to that criticism? Well, I think all criticism is good. You've got to listen to people and we've got to take that on board and we've got to go and do better at telling people what we're doing, mm. which is why you got me out of here very early in the morning from Abuja and harassed me and said, you must come, you must come and explain. And you know that I would rather be in my desk, at my desk working now. But I've realized that if you keep on working and you don't tell people what you're doing, they lose confidence. Yeah, but so what So we're correcting that. The economic blueprint then? The economic blueprint is very clear. We are going to invest in capital projects to ensure that we diversify this economy. We've been talking about diversification since I was a child, and we have diversified nothing. If we just feed ourselves, I mean, let's just deal with very fundamental things. If we just feed ourselves rather than importing food, we will create jobs. We will create wealth. We have a huge, huge population. We have a huge landmass. We have all the ingredients. What's missing is unfortunately the infrastructure. So just take something simple like tomato paste. We'll import from China tomato paste, but we have tomatoes rotting in, in Kano. Why can't we convert tomatoes into, it's those same things. Transport costs too much. By the time they've brought the tomatoes from Kano by road, which is a very inefficient way of um, moving soft fruits, they're damaged or they've ripened and rotten, rotted, and the cost is too high. But if we had rail, if we had power, if we could process, freeze, and move, we can compete. Speaking about diversifying the economy, I've got a question here from um, Eguando Tony Jeff. He says, what are we doing about Ajalkota steel complex? He says, it's a very good forex earning that will boost revenue drive like oil, create massive employment for yeah. Nigerians. I, I know that the minister for um, mines and uh, solid minerals, uh, the Minister Fayemi is very, very passionate about that project. And one of the, uh, and, and that's a, a good question because it leads me back to what we're doing on rail. So one of the issues on, on rail is to link that. Because if you, if you produce steel and you can't move it out, it becomes uncompetitive. So once we get the rail project moving, it's actually meant to go up to, to service that axis. 
and, and get that going. And I know that the Minister for uh, Mines and Steel is very passionate about getting that project going. Since you, you know, talked about criticism, I, I recall that it was just this weekend uh, that we had, uh, the, there was, I think it was the Covenant Christian Center organizing the platform. Yeah. And there, the min former Minister for Education, I don't know if you listened to her, Dr. Obi Izik recently talked about a command and control structure for the economy. Mm. Did you hear that criticism? I did. How did you respond? How do you respond to that? Well, I listened to her and she's very well respected mm -hmm. and, and I know she's very well meaning. Um, I don't agree that we have a command and control economy. I think we're trying to have a planned economy, and that's the difference. There must be some planning. You can't just grow, you know. When we, when we, when we were growing in our own heads, we were saying, oh, we have the highest number of private jets, and we were all clapping and saying how wonderful that was, and Nigeria has the one. But we also have the most terrible unemployment rate among our youth. So what we're trying to do is plan for the future and have an economy that meets the needs of Nigeria. And what's the biggest need is, is really employment. You know, we have 180, 186, the number keeps changing, million people. We're a huge, huge economy. So we can't have an e economic growth that is not inclusive. We can't have an economic growth that, that allows a few people to prosper <clears throat> at the expense of the many. So I don't think we're having a command and control economy. I think it's a planned economy, and I think that's the way to go. If we can just feed ourselves, can you imagine how many jobs will be created if we just feed ourselves. How soon do you think that some of government's policies will trickle down? Because for the everyday man, yeah. what he wants or what she wants, or you know, is just food on their yeah. table, the job clothes yeah. on their back, yeah. and roof over their heads. Uh, how soon do you think that they be you can begin to see some of as the soon things as we that get, government is As soon as we get our, our budget signed, as I said to you, we're going to pump money into the economy. We're going to pump 350 billion into the economy. Let me use, let me give you a perspective on that. That is more than we spent on capital for the last three years. We're going to pump it in one quarter, okay? And then we're lining up to do the same thing the next quarter. We're going to keep on stimulating this economy until we start to see growth. And we will see growth because if we spend on those things that are needed, We'll, we'll, we'll start to get the job creation and, and the people's suffering will be alleviated. And I, and I sympathize with people because, you know, I have family too. They call me up. Somebody called me the other day and said, and she's my cousin, she said, Auntie, I haven't had my salary for six months. And I was like, wow. But that's the kind of feedback that keeps me going, that we've got, how can that be? Is it safe to say we are likely to have surplus of money to run the economy? Because uh, if you say you've saved uh, about three trillion naira from the TSA, right? Is that what uh, we're getting from the government? About three trillion naira has been saved up from the, through the TSA. You know, I explained to you that the uh, TSA was the the balance. Okay. Then, yeah. Because if we if we've been, been able to you know keep some money from there and block some loopholes and also recover some funds from some people who have piffled the nation mm. and will get all of that uh, sorted out, uh, we're likely to have uh, more than enough to run the economy. What I can, <laughs> what I will tell you is that there are no quick solutions to this. We've got to take the pain and do this thing properly. You know, if you have cancer, you cannot take Panadol. You have to take the proper medicine. And it's painful medicine, it will take long. I don't want to come here and give people false hope. And so there's money somewhere and we just need to do some, you know, I don't want to use the word magic because ministers get in trouble when they use the word magic. But uh, there's no magic. It's got to be done painstakingly and it's got to be done sustainably. But what I can assure people is if we, if we do this, if we're able to go through this, and we've been through a lot, if we're able to go through this and come out of it better, then for the future generations, they'll have a Nigeria they can all be proud of. Do we expect the budget to be signed into law this year? I mean, sorry, this week. <laughs> Was that a Freudian slip? Or, <laughs> no, or? no, because I mean, we had several headlines saying, well, this week I'm very we hopeful. should have some I'm good always books. optimistic. There's a lot of work going on by a very competent team in the Ministry of Budget and Planning to get this right. The and I'm very gone. Confident. Can you play catch up? We will run the budget as soon as it's signed. We're ready to go. Um, as soon as it's signed. But you know, it is a process. It is a democracy. The National Assembly have their role and they, they, they're doing their best. And um, the, the team in budget and planning are doing their best. And we're just eager to get this budget signed. Let's get moving. Mm -hmm. I got one more from. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, by all means. Online, first thing I say is please ask you about the pre shipment inspection contract. It says that uh, contractors are not being paid and they're laying off staff. Uh, the pre shipment, I'll find out about it when I get back to the office. Uh, there, there are a lot of contractors that haven't I told you that look there's some people that haven't been paid since 2012 it's unfortunate but these are some of the things we're trying to sort out All right, so I guess you were joking you weren't harassed to come here hmm? did we harass you? Uh, a certain lady <laughs> met me on a plane this is, this is part of, of, of the new government right so I was 
sit staying on the on the bus with the generality of the Nigerian population, which is what Ni Nigeria's ministers do. And a certain lady harassed me and said, you promised to come on channels, you promised. And I said, okay, all right, hands up, I'll do it. You know, but I'm, I'm happy that I did, and I think it's important. And I, when we take your criticism, it, it's not that we're running away from you. It's just that, you know, there's a lot of work to do. I think, All right. you just know, have to keep ch channels must send out a note on this particular one, that we will harass any minister that we, we need to harass to get them to talk to the people, because they really need to respond. So I think that you have to take that message back, that it should be on the lookout. They will definitely be getting a lot more harassment. If we have to drag them by the ears, then they will have to come. Right. I came, I came, uh, I came voluntarily. Entirely. Thank you. Yes. All right, uh, Mrs. Kemi Adeoshu, Minister of Finance, thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you.